They last about 10 months at best, and then they just stop dehumidifying. The pumps will still run, so you think they're doing something, but they're really not if you minor humidity. You call the company up, tell them it's not uh, dehumidifying, it's running. They say, yeah, yeah, that's great. So how about we just ship you another one? And then they ship you another one, and they ship you another one, and then they ship you another one, because sometimes, like this one here, lasted me a whole, I don't know, I think it was two days, and the pipe fractured right there and spit all the f oil out onto my floor. So this one only lasted two days. So I called them back and they said, sure, we'll send you another one. And then that one lasted about, you know, a couple weeks, call them back. So here I am, I've got my, uh, what is it, we got one, two, three, four, five. My six dehumidifier is starting to freeze up. So basically, I'm gonna see if I can take this collection of parts um, and make a, one good unit because I have basically six donor units now. Always try to recover the refrigerant by putting a service valve on. Usually these things don't have anything left in them anyways. See what kind of stupid we can do raising this one up. Is it that right there? Looks like she did it. So I capped off the ends, pressurized the coil at 150 psi from my air compressor, stuck it in water, and then you just sit and watch. And you can see the air bubbles that come to the top. I found three spots. There is uh, one leak that's obviously pretty quick, and then there's two other ones that are fairly slow leaks. This one's leaking right here. This is telling me, I would say from my experience, that they have um, a die that is in need of cleaning for the tool that bends this U. It probably needs polishing, and that's why you're seeing on every single one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip away these layers. So there's another bubble there. So this is on the side that has the brazing. On the side once again that has all the soldered use or brazed and uh, i'm not seeing any leaking coming from this side it's all coming from the other side where they did their automated u-bend which will account for how many leaks we find in this evac coil that's only about 10 months old if that so there's one you know our count of uh leaks so let's call that one number two call that one number three Number four. This one's number five. Yep, there's one number six. And then of course over here. Yep, number seven. See one down here, it's number eight. Number nine, number ten. That bottom one there has to be eleven. This bottom one here be twelve. The condenser, apparently, uh, I don't see any leaks in this thing. 
Fire number two, the one that only worked for about one day, two days because the uh, the hose broke right here. It cracked, all the oil got pumped out. So pretty much the rest of this is going in the garbage because uh, I don't have the oil for this thing and it pumped out all over my floor as it just sat there running. So I might be in luck with dehumidifier number two. Surprisingly, the copper looks a little bit, quite a different color on this one for the evaporator and there's like no leaks in it which is amazing so now I come over here to the condenser and when I count I think I put a toothpick where each one is but you can just see this thing's leaking like a sieve it was never gonna hold any type of refrigerant so let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 plus so 14 toothpicks plus I'm looking at uh, another 15, 16, 17, 18 more leaks once you count the four that are coming from where the bends are. So I'm thinking if I take this one's evaporator, combine it with the last one's condenser, I might have a non-leaking dehumidifier for my basement. So maybe there's something to it with them just sending you more and more units. You eventually get enough good pieces that you might be able to make one that's going to last a couple years. So I can't believe it. I actually hooked this evap straight up just to make sure it wasn't actually having any loss of pressure getting from the compressor or anything. It's straight up no bubbles in it. So it appears I have one condenser from one unit, an evaporator from another unit. If I put them together, I should have one good unit and discharge it. There, I drilled a hole in the side of the pipe and then I brazed in a uh, tap service port. So I won't have to worry about the little bit of leaking like I had on the other one. I just threw this thing on, hit the switch, and went in and washed my hands, so I haven't even looked at the gauges yet. Uh, previously, when I hooked up, I wasn't even able to get to, like barely 20 inches of vacuum because as you saw, these things were leaking like crazy from all over the place, so 20 inches with all those pinholes everywhere seems reasonable, maybe 15 inches, somewhere in that ballpark with all the leaks each one of these units had. So now let's look at my uh, gauges as I'm sitting here pulling a vacuum. Let's see what we got here. I haven't looked yet. Oh yeah, look at that. We're almost smack on 30 inches of vacuum. So yeah, these two are definitely tight, not leaking according to my gauges. Let it sit overnight and the needle didn't budge. So hopefully this one lasts a very long time. So this one's calling for 9.2 ounces of 410A. We'll give it a charge and see what happens. So I'm fairly stabilized taking the EVAP outlet temp there with my thermocouple. So I use my uh, trusty 410 pressure temp chart. Look at my gauges. And roughly 100. See, yeah, roughly 100 psi, like 99 or something. Look at the chart. There it is. Saturation temperature at 31.2 Fahrenheit. So 31 degrees Fahrenheit is a sat temp. This is 10 degrees off, so it's actually 36 at the thermocouple. So we come up here, because it's a 410 refrigerant, we have a temp glide of 0.5 degrees with this blend, which is pretty much zero. But we want to make sure we're at least more than one under the, uh, the superheat. But anyhow, EVAC temp 36, 410 sat point at 100 PSI would be 31 degrees according to our chart and then our superheat comes out to 5 degrees so this system is charged pretty good feeling one of the rarest moments in US history I have a dehumidifier that should not be leaking any refrigerant anytime soon probably one of the very few that are in America that actually will not leak so when I blew the hole in this evap trying to solder it I was like man after I thought about it I was like that didn't take much heat. So I cut out a section of piping here and uh, we're gonna measure the wall thickness. 
So let's, uh, obviously you can see I'm uh, zeroed out. And it's repeatable. Come in here, 11 thousandths. Measure, turn a little. About 12-ish, turn it a little. Maybe as high as uh, 13 there. 11 again, 11. So we're mostly 11s. You're always gonna have a little inconsistency. Oh, there we go. Drops to 10 there. I just have to get it to settle by wiggling it a little. So we're about 11 thousandths on the wall. So that would probably explain why a lot of these new um, appliances, they're, they're just making these walls really thin. So now it's just luck if you're going to get one without a defect. So now I took the leaking condenser, did the same thing, cut a piece out. So let's, uh, let's see what happens here. It's hard to get a measurement on this thin stuff, but uh, we're looking about the same wall thickness, 11-ish, 11, 12, yeah. So that pretty much sums up the, today's equipment, very thin wall. Here's two service ports, both of these I got off Amazon. This long one here is a cheapie, and then the short one is a more expensive one. So you can see already in the camera that clearly there's a difference in wall thickness. So the cheap one, if we look at it, looking about 14-ish, 14, 13, 14. Then the more expensive one, looking about 22. Re-zero it and do it again. 22 for the wall thickness of the thicker one, or the shorter, more expensive one. They may try to claim it helps with thermal conductivity, but if they can't keep the refrigerant in the coil, then the wall thickness is too thin. Dehumidifier number three, I call it. I really like this one. It was a nice looking one. I wish it would work, but it lost all its refrigerant. So three, and you can see it's about to bubble. There we go. And there's uh, two spots already. Evap coil number three appears only two of the bends are leaking. I'm not going to go through and tear apart the other side too, mainly because once I see this I already seen how bad it can get with my first evap coil. Also there's another leak right there with uh, evap coil number three. So this is condenser 3 directly hooked up to uh, 150 psi of regular air from my compressor. There's no leaks in this one. So at least I'm able to salvage a condenser out of this unit. Well, this one, number 4, uh, went to recover. There's also no refrigerant in this one either. Port on this unit, just check charge, see if I need to recover it. This one is leaking so bad it doesn't even have anything in it. So. I think I'm running out of luck here to get enough good parts to make another unit. This is condenser and evap number four. So I peeled back because it was already starting to show leaks. So we can just make it quicker on this one and get it over with. You can see once again, we have bubbles. Bubble there. Got a bubble right up here. That little guy there. There's another one forming right in the center of the screen. Let's see if we can get that one. There we go. see. Then you got that one, of course, that's forming right here. I mean, it's the same thing on all these. They just, that one's about to float up. And that little guy there. So I didn't even, I'm not even going to flip it over to look for any more leaks. Um, what, what can you say? The unit was empty. This is condenser number four. Got no leaks in it. So, scored another condenser. 
So the bad news is the evaporators are always leaking on me. These two are leaking, which means the only one I had that wasn't leaking is in the current unit that's running. So if that one goes bad, then I'm back to square one where I need an evaporator.